everybody. My name is Kunga Denzompa. And this is a picture of me and my best friend Leslie. We both were international students at Guilford, my undergraduate. She's from Ghana and I'm from the Himalayas. And since we were always together on campus, people expected my name to be Leslie and her name to be Kunga because apparently Kunga sounds more African and Asian people when they come to the US like to change their names into something simple such as Leslie. I bring this up because oftentimes we let our preconceived notions about people define what we perceive as reality. Assumptions can be very risky, especially when we are dealing with people or communities from cultures other than our own. When we aren't familiar with these communities, we let our assumptions about these people or these communities determine whatever sounds acceptable in our head. Now, Again, with these assumptions, the way we deliver information or the way we interact with these unfamiliar communities can lead to a lag between how we intend to interact and how we actually end up interacting. Incidents like this more so than often happens among health professionals, especially dealing when they're dealing with refugee immigrant communities. And this is where I like to em emphasize the importance of health communication. The CDC defines health communication as the study and use of communication strategies to inform and influence individual decisions that enhance health. Now, with that being said, we need to counter the fact that health in itself is a culture. And so what a standard procedure of health is for you isn't necessarily the same for a refugee or an immigrant. By this, I mean that different cultures prioritize different needs, such as socioeconomic needs, family needs, over basic health needs. For example, uh, an annual visit to the gynecologist for women in America is extremely important. However, this particular medical procedure is something that is foreign to these communities in Southeast Asia and Africa, where almost none of these women ever visit the gynecologist unless they are pregnant. Even pregnancy is a non-clinical traditional procedure for those living in the rural parts of the countries. In fact, my mother gave birth to me in my grandmother's bedroom, and note that we live in the city part of the state. So when these refugee immigrant communities come to the United States, they're extremely hesitant in utilizing these healthcare facilities such as dental, annual dental visits, annual physicals, OBGYN visits. And the reason for this is not solely due to financial limitations, but oftentimes have to do with the fact that they're unfamiliar with the culture of regular checkups. The culture of hospital visits in these communities is only limited to urgent care and not necessarily preventive care. Unless, of course, you're very privileged and have the money to do so. So when these communities settle in the United States, a process such as health communication is extremely important in bridging impactful dialogue between these communities and health professionals, in a, and thereby inculcating a positive culture of health, where both these communities and health professionals, although culturally different, are still able to work together towards the same goal, which is community health. Now, you might be wondering how this is possible knowing that the culture of health is different among different cultures and how do you incorporate health communication in a work field? Well, I'll walk you through a research project that I'm a part of. So I'm one of the project coordinators for the Montagnat Hypertension Research Project and this is our logo for the project under the supervision of Dr. Morrison who is a faculty here at UNCG and we work with a specific ethnic group of refugees from the highlands of Vietnam called the Montagnards. Dr. Morrison has been working with this group since 2001 and from what she observed and experienced with the community is that the community suffers hypertensive health issues mainly due to barriers of language, culture, socioeconomic backgrounds, post-war traumas, and lifestyle in general, which oftentimes prevents them from accessing healthcare resources or even just navigation of health resources. So, as a part of our health intervention, or as we like to call it, giving back to the community, we are hosting a health fair on April 10th. I bring this up because the logistics and the plan that we started with at the beginning of the semester has completely taken a 180 degree turn. This is because oftentimes, as public health people, we feel like our theoretical knowledge can be directly applied in, to practical work in the community. However, this is not the case, and I can say this because our team has faced first-hand experience with this issue. And this issue is where health communication was extremely important in bridging the cultural gap between our research team and the Montagnard community. So in order to combat this, these health um, problems that we 
that we found out through our findings from the research where issues such as domestic violence and mental health issues along with other preventive cares and educational resources that we try to we're trying to incorporate in the health fair. So in order to address domestic violence, we planned on having a skit with Martignan actors demonstrating domestic violence in a normal household and then having a skill building session afterwards. However, when the elders of the community were informed about the way we were presenting domestic violence, they were completely against it and asked us to shut down the idea. Now, this is where health communication was extremely important. Instead of immediately shunning the idea just because it was coming from the community members, knowing that the, they can identify their needs the best, we had a personal meeting with the elders of the community. And from the meeting, what we learned was that the topic itself wasn't an issue, but the way we were presenting it, by in a way centralizing domestic violence just to be Montagnard specifics, was what they had issues with. So they w the, the way this community's culture is designed is very interesting because, and being a Himalayan myself, I can completely relate to this issue. Most Asian cultures are very private. We don't like our private issues to be brought into light. And so the members wanted issues to be addressed that were universal issues, so it doesn't seem like domestic violence is something just happens that just happens in the Martinia community. And therefore, even just changing the name from domestic violence to family stressors and then replacing Martinia actors with American actors made a whole lot of difference because now the, the skit was more of a universal issue that was being brought into the Montagnard community as an informational purpose and not wasn't just specific to Montagnard community. So you see how it's not always the problem with the ideas, but it's, like I said before, it's how we present it. And a strategy such as communi health communication is, is very essential in combating or even just addressing uh, issues in a community-friendly manner. So the big idea I hope you take away today is that health communication is a strategy, but it's to be utilized in a way that is mindful and respectful of other people's opinions and personal beliefs. Because even though these foreign communities are now in America and have to adjust to American culture, it doesn't always mean that they completely abandon theirs. And we all know that the United States is a melting pot of different cultures. And so the only, it would only make sense for us to coexist together, and that would be by coming together to the middle ground and working towards the same larger goal, which is enhancement of community health in general. Thank you.